Hello, this is Professor Dan Kernler again of Elgin Community College. This video is part of my statistics series. In this video, we're going to talk about uh, designed experiments, some of the vocabulary and terminology and what goes into designing a good experiment. So let's get to it. So in this video, we're going to talk about designed experiments in the statistical context about how to design a good experiment where the results can explain causation between one variable and another. Uh, we've actually talked about a couple of these already. One of them was in housing discrimination, where testers sent out white home buyers, black home buyers. Uh, they were matched according to gender and age and equally uh, qualified. What they found is that compared to whites, black renters were told about and shown fewer units. Black home buyers were told about and shown fewer homes. Um, white renters were more likely to be told that the fees were negotiable and also more likely to be told about incentives. Black home buyers were more likely to be shown units with more problems and also were to be told on average that rent was higher. And because they were matched according to gender and age and equally well qualified, we can assume that the difference here was because of the perceived race of the potential renter or home buyer. We also looked at the hiring discrimination, where testers sent out um, fake applications where they had just had different names, names like Lakeisha Washington or Jamal Jones, stereotypically black sounding, or names like Emily Walsh, Greg Baker, names that might be stereotypically associated with white individuals. And what they found is those resumes that were associated with the white sounding names received 50% more callbacks. And the key that we've talked about before is because these were designed experiments, we can claim that the perceived difference in race caused those differing results because it was a designed experiment. So what we want to do now is expand on that and learn about the language of experiments and how we can design a good experiment. Um, the, the four different key terms we're going to focus on are first experimental units. These are the things that you're experimenting upon. In our case, it was the individuals. Second is the treatment. That's the thing you're applying to try to see if it makes a difference. In our case, that was race. Uh, the third is the response variable. That depends on the experiment. That's the thing you're measuring as the outcome. And fourth is factors. These are anything that might affect that response variable. And you need to be aware of this because maybe there's something else that's affecting that response variable that you didn't consider and control for. So factors are anything that can affect the response variable. Let's look at our hiring discrimination example. In this case, the experimental units are the individuals, these fake applications, fake resumes that were submitted. The treatment is the names, whether it's a black sounding name or a white sounding name. The response variable was, did they get a call back from the job? So what about the factors? What are all the things that we think might affect whether someone gets a call back? Certainly we, th we think the perceived race is one. That's what the treatment is. That's what we're experimenting upon. But also gender. Maybe there's some bias associated with the managers. Um, certainly relevant job experience is going to affect whether you get a call back. Um, of course, your education level, how well you did in school. All these different things need to be accounted for. And the big thing here is because we design an experiment, they can claim causation. They can claim that the perceived race caused the difference in the response rates. Let's talk about different types of design experiments. One of the most common is completely randomized. A good example that's in the news right now is the COVID-19 vaccines, where they take volunteers, half of them get the vaccine, the other half get some kind of placebo, like a saline shot, and then they compare results when they're done. Uh, in this case, you can see even in the language that it was a randomized double-blind study. What a double-blind study means is that the people getting the shots don't know if they have a vaccine or a saline solution or placebo. Um, the doctors and medical personnel tracking them, monitoring their health, all they don't know. Only the experimenters who are collecting the data and monitoring it in the background know um, which one has the vaccine and which one does not. That way the individual um, doesn't like suddenly behave more recklessly because they know they have the vaccine or you know, change their behavior in any way. The research, the, the medical staff doesn't treat those with the vaccine different than those without. So there's no bias created in that. And that's a double blind. 
And that is kind of the, the standard for medical tests. The second type of design experiment is called a matched pairs. We actually talked about one of these. This was the housing discrimination. They actually paired individuals according to gender and age and made them equally well qualified. And that way, because they were paired and sent to the same home or apartment, um, they could know that if there was a difference based on race, it was simply because of race, because everything else was paired. And the third type of design experiment is called a randomized block. This is similar to the first type of study, like the vaccine study. Maybe we have half the people the vaccine, half the people placebo, but maybe we wonder if results might be different by age. So what we would do is split up the population based on different age groups and then see if the results differ. Um, this might sound familiar, uh, this is basically stratified sampling where there's some criteria that you're interested in that you think might affect the results. So you actually break up by that group, whatever that criteria is. In this case, it might be age. Uh, and then you look at the results after controlling for age. The most important thing here, again, because these are designed experiments, if they are well designed and they follow the procedures and they control for all the factors they can, randomize the other so they're randomly mixed between the two groups, one with the treatment, one without, then we can claim causation. If we don't control for those, if we just look at collected data, we don't do a design experiment, we can't claim that one thing causes another. This is what designed experiments do for us. All right, that is it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this and want to see more, you can subscribe, hit the bell to get notified. I've got a whole series of these coming out. I also want to take a moment to thank the Elgin Community College Board of Trustees who approved this video as part of my sabbatical project during the spring 2021 semester. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.